Thank you very much, Professor Bayat, for giving us a few moments of your time. Could you speak about Iran's revolution, the ideas and ideals that they were behind it? You're talking about the 1979 revolution, yes, or yes. you're talking about the recent uh, <laughs> the 1979. uprising? Yes. Uh, well, the Iranian revolution have been, by and large, is one of the, um, of course, the first and I have argued that perhaps the last Islamic revolution of our time. Uh, uh, of course, the Islamization uh, of the revolution basically was unfolded uh, after the downfall of the regime. Uh, however, uh, if we uh, talk about the Iranian revolution as a process, uh, when it began and it uh, was unfolded, um, largely it was uh, anti-imperialist and uh, anti-monarchy uh, uh, and democratic revolution. However, the outcome of the revolution uh, changed uh, after the new revolutionaries took over the state power. And could you talk about the recent activities that's just going on between the religious leader Khamenei and the president Ahmadinejad? Well, it seems that, of course, there is a, a big disagreement uh, between them, uh, despite the fact that uh, Ahmadinejad had been uh, supported uh, wholeheartedly by the supreme leader uh, against the uh, candidate of the Green Movement. Nevertheless, we see uh, the development of uh, quite considerable rift uh, between the two uh, uh, leaders. Uh, at the same time between the supporters uh, of these two uh, leaders. Uh, certainly it has significant implication for the perhaps stability of the regime itself. But we have to be very um, uh, mindful of the fact that uh, rift in the, at the elite at the top level has almost always existed uh, since the revolution and they have managed to somewhat resolve when they have encountered uh, opposition uh, from below. We don't know what will really be the uh, outcome of this uh, rift and differences. Uh, we have to see uh, what happens. Do you think this is a sign of Iranian governments going post-Islamic govern government? Yes. Well, I think the notion of uh, uh, post-Islamism uh, as a vision uh, largely, uh, I think, uh, emerged in the mid-1990s uh, when it was uh, somewhat um, it manifested itself uh, in the so-called new uh, reform movement. And uh, it was uh, also reflected itself in certain policies of uh, the reform government uh, under President uh, Mohammad Khatami. Um, if it had remained uh, and uh, had succeeded uh, uh, you know, in, in power by trying to transform and change the uh, more theocratic um, manifestation, uh, kind of characteristic uh, of the regime, and had, if it had uh, empowered the uh, social movements from below for a democratic change, then we would have say that uh, you know the government has moved towards uh, post-Islamism. Right now, while you have at the societal level an important um, uh, movement, which in my view uh, is post-Islamist, but at the level of the government, uh, by no means, by no means yet, uh, and that the future depends upon this, uh, of course, the uh, conflict, or, or rather confrontation between this movement from below and the uh, regime uh, at the top. Now, I want to change a little bit to what's going on in the Arab world, all this revolution. Can you talk about that in general? Yeah. Well, it is a, a, a monumental change, uh, in my view. A change that uh, until, say, four or five months ago, probably nobody would uh, predict and that will happen. But uh, especially scholarship, actually, on the Middle East uh, has really failed to uh, see the possibility uh, of such a, 
uh, very significant transformation uh, in the Arab world. Uh, you know, uh, you know the major uh, vision of the both the scholarship and especially the uh, media has been that uh, Middle Eastern uh, societies, especially our world, have been one uh, in which we characterized by largely stagnation. Uh, it doesn't move uh, very much, uh, and the, uh, it has to do with a particular stagnant culture. It has to do with Islam and so on. I think this. A uh, wave of uh, revolutions and revolt, uh, which are un unfolding today, has, uh, I think, in some way debunked uh, that uh, premise. And we need to look uh, at the region with new lens and with, with, with new vocabulary, really. And uh, I think a lot of people right now uh, are working. I'm quite really uh, optimistic uh, about the future. There is a lot of work uh, to do. Uh, you know, some regimes ha have uh, uh, fallen. And uh, so the revolution is still going on in those uh, countries, like Tunisia, like uh, Egypt. In others, they are going on. In some countries, like in Yemen or Bahrain, there is resistance on the part of the uh, ruling uh, elites. But nevertheless, it seems that the direction is towards more and more openness and democracy in the region, which ha would have a significant, really, impact you know, on the future of world politics.